all right so we are on the part 2 of chapter number 17 dr kemp's visitor uh, if you remember chapter number 17 we have we were in the house of dr kemp and the invisible man has landed here and he has told kemp that i know you because we were in the same college the university college and he has told so much about himself but even if dr kemp wants to know how he has become invisible and of course the reader also wants to know but he has griffin has not revealed anything he has only asked for food and he has asked for clothes he wants to be comfortable and he says right now i am so tired because i have not slept for 3 days he says i cannot tell you anything but maybe in the next chapter chapter number 18 Right now we are going to do a review in this second part of chapter number 17 so let us review this chapter there is a sound of doorbell at dr kemp's house but the maid who answers it finds nobody after midnight kemp goes towards his room and notices blood stains on the rug as well as on the door knob of his own room so this is something very strange for him how has blood appeared all over his house his bed is also tumbled up and the bed bed clothes are blood stained with a sheet torn so as dr kemp enters his room it is a complete mess and he is trying to understand how come this whole thing has happened like this kemp hears a low voice good heavens kemp and also sees a bandage suspended in mid air you know a bandage suspended in mid air because his sheet was torn so of course the reader understands that the invisible man has made a bandage and what has he bandaged he has bandaged his wrist the invisible man uh, has bandaged his wrist because it is injured uh, and how is it injured by the gunshot that was fired in the previous chapter suddenly a voice addresses him and an invisible hand holds him by the shoulder even when kemp is trying to understand what is happening uh, an invisible hand holds his shoulder and kemp kemp fights frantically but is pinned down on the bed and threatened by the invisible man the voice tells him that he is griffin This is the first time that the author has used his name. We have been using his name because we have done the quotation from this chapter in chapter number 1 itself. So we know his name, but the author has not revealed his name right up till chapter number 17. Griffin, a fellow student from University College, 6 feet